right, so listen, I'm a little conflicted because I much rather would start with a real team and what Michigan did, but we wanted to give Michigan the prime billing. And prime really starts at 3 o'clock. So I want to get to Michigan and the playoff and the Big Ten championship and all of it and do it really at the pinnacle of the show, which is three. Starting out with the junior varsity is not how I normally like to do business. But this is something where I have to walk a very, very fine line. And I want to explain. this. I can be happy for a human being while still thinking they stink. So I want you to understand something before you come up with your mealy mouth, tiny brain responses. I'm not ice cold to the human angle of Dan Campbell finally getting a win and being happy. This is the man's life's work. He doesn't go to work every day trying to suck. He's not some incel who's there to get the first pick and then leave town. He's trying to win. I respect that. Now, I have talked about how important it was for them to get off the schneid. And yes, yesterday gets part of that done. But there are two things that really bother me about yesterday. One is, this guy stinks. Fourth and an inch Mm. from your own 28-yard line. Mm -hmm. And you try to run razzle-dazzle 400 and throw the ball? Now look, I've seen a lot of bad play calls in my life. You watch enough football, you're going to see enough coaches make enough bad moves, and you just get numb to it. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot for me to look at something and go, you know, let me open my uh, Santa shopping list. You know when the kid has it in the movie Elf and he's flipping through the pages? Let me flip through my Santa list of bad coaching moves. That decision yesterday ranks amongst the worst decisions I've ever seen. The fact that the Vikings all knew where the like no one was fooled. They you look down the field and every receiver was covered. It's fourth and an inch. You can't do that. Now he got bailed out. And lost in all of this will be Amon Ra St. Brown. And I do have some thoughts on him. It'll be lost in well, they won the game. It'll be lost in, but you wanted them to win. And that's for the, the frankly the unintelligent. The reality is for about the fifth straight week. Your coach hurt the team. You know, in the postgame melee, he said it. You know, the offense, we put you in some bad spots. No, no, Dan, you did. Going forward on your own 40 early in the game, stupid. Mm -hmm. Going forward on your own 28 on fourth and inches, it's either a sneak or a punt. It's stupid. You did that. Now, he got bailed out. Yep. But that doesn't mean he did a good job. So understand something. Winning a game was critical. It's critical because you can't have the specter of going winless over your head. But if you think my opinion's any different on Dan Campbell's acumen as a head coach, you're crazy. Do they play hard for this guy? They do. But he's terrible. He cannot be anywhere near calling plays. They must bring in a big-time offensive coordinator who is beyond reproach and keep Dan Campbell as far away as possible. That was wretched yesterday. Now, that gets me to part two. And this is the part I don't apologize for. I don't need to. No matter how hard I try to view the Lions as more than you do, hold them to a standard that I hold my team, the Giants, or David's team, the Steelers, or whatever team you root for, Rico's team, the 49ers. I hold them to a standard as if they are a real NFL team. And no matter how much I try to do it, they take away my ability to do it with nonsense. That post game yesterday <laughs> was as minor league and embarrassing as it gets. But, Mike, they won their first I get game. It. I get it. I get it. But let me finish now. When I see <laughs> Sheila Ford Hamp 
jumping into the arms of the head coach, and then Dan Campbell lifting her up as if she's Miss Elizabeth, and it's Monday Night Raw. They were practicing the scene from Dirty Dancing 2. Uh, I'm waiting for him to scream, snap into a Slim Jim. (laughs) Then the melee, and I'm sitting here watching this going, guys, it's cool to be happy you won, I get it, but if that's the celebration at 110 and 1, what are we going to do? Burn the room down if we beat Green Bay? Win a division? Look, man. It kind of let me know where the bar was. Well, that's the, that's, yes. That is why I'm bringing this up. You, you nailed it. Guys, I get it. It's their life's work. I'm not telling them not to be thrilled. But there is an element to this that is so minor league. It's so lemonade stand that I sat there watching it and it was the height of of cringeworthy because in real NFL towns that celebration is reserved for winning a playoff game you, a division you clinched the division you know what i would even accept that guys we just clinched a wild card spot something we're in celebrate I- owner let's jump in the arms of the coach michigan didn't celebrate that hard they won the Big Ten. <laughs> I didn't see Harbaugh lifting Mark Schlissel or Ward Manuel into the air and well, doing a pirouette. Yeah, but Bo was looking down, smiling, according to so. I'm going to stay away from that because I'm going to be positive about U of M today. I will just tell you I've called Trick Trick, and along with Rick Ross, Gus Johnson is no longer welcome, no fly zone in the city of Detroit. Gus Johnson is an embarrassment. Kay may want to get a morning after pill. I'll Gus Johnson is an embarrassment, and we'll leave it alone. <laughs> Big Ten champs, and the Wolverines exercised a lot of demons. We'll get to that at three. But if you're a Lions fan, listen to me. Don't be mad at what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. You can react to it however you like. But I'm free to react to it how I want because I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. What I saw from Dan Campbell yesterday was malfeasance of the highest order. Again, he got bailed out, and I'm thrilled for him Because no man wants to go to work and be terrible. This guy's worked his whole life for this job. I can be happy for a human. But I don't have to say he did a good job. And I don't know what Rico's... Is that a Lions fan running into the street? (laughs) Hope they get hit by a car. Are you serious? We're doing this again? Oh, my God. I wish a cartoon like Brink's truck would would just... Oh. oh, my. He's got a flag? Yes. The only way that gets better is if he'd stab himself. <laughs> Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Michigan gets the main dish at three. We'll get to the Lions right now. Kenny, David, you can feel free. You want to strike me down. You want to tell me I'm being mean. You do whatever you want. But I, I'm telling you, he got bailed out again. This guy is terrible right now, game day. And that celebration after the game tells you everything wrong with this franchise. Sheila, this is so exciting. I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, I I, I just, come on, guys. You're 0-10-1. Right. You know what? If come you, on. If you had won a game maybe in the first couple of weeks, your first game here, excitement. At this point, you know what? Celebrate, maybe turn the music up a little bit, smiles, handshake, pats on the back. But you're right. That's what you see. Congratulations. You're headed to the NFC Championship game. That's minor. You're headed to the Super Bowl. You just won a division. I would even take you just clinched the last wild card spot. David, where when have you seen your Steelers react that way? Post game with Tomlin. When we won the Super Bowl. Rooney's jumping up in the, on Tomlin's arm. So, so understand. We love you. So understand something. <clears throat> I'm not knocking or telling you they can't be happy. That's not what this is. I understand. Yes. Don't call in with that. What I am saying is there is a middle ground to where something is over the top and shows you just how low the starting point is here. I mean, did, that that's my issue is if a fan can sit there, I can be happy and go, thank God they won a game. I don't want to talk about a winless team. I don't care how they won the game. Get a win. They did. But if you think I'm letting him off the hook, for that ridiculous fourth down call at his own 28. I can't do it, guys, because the grading scale for an NFL head coach is 
Put your team in the best possible positions to succeed. This is about five weeks in a row now. Dan Campbell has not done that. Mm-mm. That has got to change, man. You got lucky. Thank God they, they won. They got Jesus. the victory, but my goodness, Minnesota went all Detroit Lions at the end of the game. You're Are like, they aware you got to cover the front of the end zone and not the back? Right. They were all standing at the end. The guy uh, could have made the tackle inbounds. He pushed him out of bounds. Hey. And get, take, had it, no timeouts. <laughs> take it whatever way you can get it. They needed a win. Rico, I want to see him get another one before the year's out. I, I just am so uncomfortable no, with this guy honestly, as head no. coach. You know what? Just keep that first pick because you have options if you have that number one pick. And they're going to keep. Every other team's got three wins. But you got that tie. Uh, so if you win another game with that right. tie – you're actually below them. The damnedest thing, the thing that really bugs me, these guys play hard for it. They do. But how many times is this guy going to do dumb stuff before the players start to recognize it and go, I, 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 I can't keep doing this. I'm just, I, I'm saying there's going to come a point where these games really matter. Mm-hmm. There's going to come a point where, God willing, there's talent on this roster. Rico, fourth and a hot dog from your own 28, and this guy tried to be Bill Belichick. That was a rancid decision. Now, he had already failed earlier in the game at his own 40. And if you want to punt, you punt. Defense had played well. If you want to go for it, it's got to be a QB sneak. It must be a sneak. And See, I would even say just the element of surprise, two plays in the huddle. Guys, if we get close, we're going for it. We're not calling timeout. We're not looking to the sideline. We're the not going to. execution gonna... of that pass play. Was more because yeah. Once you let everybody know, okay, we're going for here's a timeout. Okay, we got they, they're trying something. But if you just lined up because you already knew, right? If we get close, we're going for it. Maybe this works. And I just want to know if we can have a conversation about the celebration. You know, if you're like whatever, I don't care. That's fine. I'm a different type of fan. I know what that celebration should be reserved for. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I go, you got. 